designing smart microservices architecture for business group and for this i would like to invite on stage mr ashish naik who is an executive vice president of information technology with a demonstrated history of working in the bfsi segment including capital markets banking and commodity exchanges he is skilled in technology leadership development it solutions it infrastructure management and software project management he is an information technology professional with hands on experience in trading engines api management devops cloud as well as on premises based software architecture and resource management with this please welcome ashish with a big round of applause um two weeks back i was in my one of vendors office there on one particular desk there was one slogan saying yah sab gyani hai gyan work party this is applicable in very much sense over here here everyone is expert in devops and i am not here to give any additional gyan but instead of that i am taking you to the journey of devops implementation in our organization and i would like to share our experiences so this is my topic but i take on and take a deeper deep to change these topics and design a smart file service architecture for business i am ashish naik working for kota group for last 24 years currently i am heading it application in kota securities so with that i will just start my presentation and i will not take more than 15 minutes to run in my devops implementation journey using microservices and web services so before that uh, i will just try to give you what we are for people who are not aware kota securities in online trading platform where we deal in the stocks there are data customers buy and sell stocks and uh, if you know products all our app and web why we are there in this business in this it from last 20 to 30 years and the technology for 20 years we are having is evolved a much but covid gives us a different type of flavor to handle the technology while other businesses in covid was into shutdown mode you may be aware to broking the stock markets takes leaps and bounds while it is good for economy it is a nightmare for us who manage the system over here we were not at all prepared for that so there we realize there are three sets of problem and those problems first scalability the concurrency of the traffic that you get on our system at 9:15 am in the morning is three times my average traffic or average concurrency because 9:15 shop market opens and everybody jumps into that second problem reliability even one component is down gone my side is down So for problems for the challenge, of obviously we are dealing with this business with these systems from from the last twenty years, so legacy was better. And for that, obviously legacy process and legacy systems, our innovation taken a setback because we were there already in fire fighting mode. To solve the problem, we have thought of taking we have thought of taking this challenge up front before that a small uh, the way our systems are i have around more than 25 systems a small system to manage the applications uh, some of my application are in classic monolithic architecture some of them are in service oriented asoe based platform now this asoe my most of the customer facing platform is in the asoe platform and actually 
means, that is okay to do it just more than that. But the challenge is what we face in last three years. So only solution that we had to transfer our system into microservices based platform. To get on to this part, we have articulated three principles. First, decomposition of our functionalities, putting in second is putting into containerization, and the third is API first approach. All my access is through API, and that API we decided to get into Open API 3.0 standard format. So this project was continued. We the major step that step step that we use is primarily AWS is for our cloud service. We use GoLang for our development of services. Obviously, we use Flutter for our front end uh, app development. Obviously, it's not part of uh, my DevOps thing, but just for information. For API manager, we use WSO3, where my authentication, authorization will be taken care of. Along with that, the throttling is taken care of at the at API manager level. The last one, Azure DevOps, is an interesting combination. While for all everything else, we are using AWS, we use Azure DevOps. As a tool for the team collaboration, <coughs> my code is in Azure Devops, Azure Repo, repository in Azure Repo, and the pipelines you use is on Azure Repo. And uh, it was a bit, uh, uh, it's this combination I don't think has been used much. Either they go for uh, AWS, they go for the AWS stack. Or also we go for other side. We manage both these two, and it is working fairly well. Uh, implementation of the system, um, AWS environment as a spoke, API as a spoke. Um, Redis, we use caching. We use caching extensively where required. CDN. I hope people are aware of this again. This is not a part of our microservices platform, but we use CDA to deliver our semi static content. The adverb, why I am mentioning it over here? Because that reduces load on my microservices. And that is very important. My latency improved. And second thing, my Compute required for the cloud is reduced, and that is a positive for us to achieve it. Uh, why stock market is from in the morning at 330? But there is a huge, huge workload at the end of the day, and there are multiple jobs at hands. We use DTOPS using tool called Argos. My jobs are automating Argos. A month back, a month back, I met Martin Fowler. I'm not sure if you are aware. He is the father of Agile. He was in Fortbox. He made a very interesting statement, and I like it. He said, observability is like blood in that is flowing in your body. What it means? Observability has to be inbuilt. You can't put it from external. We use Prometheus and Grafana for infra monitoring. We use ESK stack for my log management. And we use Instana for my APM as well as for latency monitoring end to end. The customer who is operating my app on mobile. 
key what kind of latency from his app to my server and into his app that is being getting monitored and this is very very important one for us when the morning night team meets our team our research team takes this uh, uh, they do this thing and they monitor this instance and you will for full day few numbers that's why the difference we use 49 microservices there are 80 plus monitoring ports around 100 plus or that is for jobs total 463 ports that is currently working on the production benefits obviously what are the problems we had three years back we saw that scalability horizontal and vertical that is achieved but most important thing most important thing is dynamic scaling dynamic resource allocation that was what we needed because you never know when market is going to go up and when market is going to fall site reliability where we are avoiding avoided single point of failure redundancies and failover of bit automation CSD pipeline that is being I just mentioned about using Azure too, and my test cases are automated. So for my deployment, after my code is being done, there is a automated test cases get not get executed. Uh, change in culture is is a benefit that we achieve as a part of implementation of the ops. Where the team collaboration has increased tremendously. Accountability share. This is this particular. I like this particular part. Earlier, when there was an issue or delay in delivering any project, there used to point out between the teams. As we used to say, we used to say, in our delay, yeah, in our delay, we talk about that. Yeah, how many rates are? I told that he. Q&A testing yeah, is very simple. Let's get all over. Now, because of this change, we introduce people pod, and that pod has a representation from all the participants. Now, success or failure of that particular project is the responsibility of the pod, and that helps us a lot in changing our culture. Observability. I mentioned sometimes that, but important point over here to say is that all the other things coming out of my systems are integrated in the channel slack, slack where you get the others on your mobile, wherever you are, what time it is. Agility, faster deployment, faster development, and as multiple teams are working together, obviously time to market has been put a lot. This benefit sounds great from the tech side you and me, but for business it comes to numbers. How will you use your technology to actually make value for business? And I am proud to say that we achieve that number. This platform is live five months back, and in five months now it is capturing, it is using my sixty percent of my business. So that's achieving me actually business growth is being there and achieved by implementing this platform and this ecosystem. Have we stopped? No, we have not stopped yet. We are our journey continues, and this is what we have already covered. Where they say ops, we are not there, and we are yet to go, and we are yet to implement, and that that is our next step. Um, now this slide is interesting. Um, what we say is basically there are. Three types of let's say evolve of um, 
there needs to be a uh, basically homologic application where homologic application we used to get a waterfall model and we used to deploy this in the physical server in the common data centers. Then the next is the agile where we, we use entire architecture and the virtual they are deployed on the VM in the hosted mode. Whereas DevOps is a microservices on the containers and we product on the cloud. For total security, at this moment, I am using all three in tandem. For me, it depends upon what is the use case, what is the application, and all three bases, we are not going behind the mere buzzword or the trend in the market. We actually evaluate what is required and what suits the current business need. On the basis, we have this all these platforms, all these processes, and all those architecture are coexisting and it is working well. And with this, I think I finished so-called presentation. And uh, thanks, thanks.